We were shocked when Matthew McConaughey's movie was canceled out of nowhere. We heard that it had been canceled because of some disturbing allegations, but no one knew what they were. We could only assume that they were serious since the production company decided to dip after six weeks of production. In this video, we'll talk about what went down with McConaughey and Dallas Sting. First off, what was the movie about? It was planned to take place in New Orleans. The movie was about the story of the success of a ladies football squad in 1984 that had been assembled to compete in a politically charged tournament in China was going to be the basis for the film. Their unlikely win was going to serve as a motivational example of sportsmanship. Caitlin Deaver was supposed to be playing Bill's daughter. While McConaughey was going to play the role of the team's coach, Bill Kinder, who had no previous experience managing a football team. Up next, why was the movie important? From what we've heard, the movie was going to be about trying to get Bill Kinder's Texas-based team to go big on an international level. McConaughey's character was even prepared to pay $85,000 for all the flights with his credit card. Talk about being a dedicated coach. And that's not all, though. Even the historical context that the movie was set in was very exciting. It was set at a time when Reagan had decided to start engaging with China after America's long period of isolation. This was obviously before the U.S. decided to take part in more world events, although we definitely wish they'd just stayed out of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Of course, the underdog team, who's never previously competed against other nations, will manage to defeat Australia, China, Japan, and Italy to reach the finals. You know, the usual sports movie deal. Kerry Scoglin, who who has worked on many TV shows like Condor, The Handmaid's Tale, and House of Cards, was set to direct Dallas Sting. Liz Flayhive and Carly Mensch worked on the script. They'd also written Glow, which was about a women's professional wrestling show and had similar themes. Currently, there are no other projects listed that McConaughey was working on. His most recent live-action role was in Guy Ritchie's The Gentleman, and he just did the voice of Buster Moon again in Sing 2. With all that work, it made almost no sense for the movie to get canceled, followed by The Truth About Bill Kinder. It started with a note written by an unknown person and ended with a $35 million movie being scrapped. Skydance was about two months away from completing production on the movie that was based on a true story and supposed to be inspiring everyone, and it got canceled out of nowhere on September 14th. Apparently, McConaughey's assistant at WME got an anonymous complaint about Kinder and sent it to Skydance and Berlanti Productions. Kinder told the Daily Mail on September 15th that the letter said he'd touched her inappropriately and called her names. Skydance hired an investigator to find the accuser, over the next two weeks, many interviews were done as part of the investigation. It's unclear what the investigation found, or if it was even finished, because a chilling effect happened. McConaughey, who was going to play the coach, and director Kerry Scogland, left the project, which had the potential to become radioactive. No one wanted to have to answer questions about a character's alleged bad behavior at a press conference a year from now. In this day and age, the last thing McConaughey would want is to be associated with a person like that. Moving on to Skydance, taking a financial hit. Other producers watched with some worry as the project was shut down and Skydance lost a few million dollars. After all, no one had made a formal accusation and no one had come out publicly to say bad things about the coach. One executive working on journalistic adaptations says studio investigations like this never happen because companies think skeletons will pop out as soon as journalists write articles. Still, there have been times when accusations have come out late in the game. Late in 2019, Apple had to change its plans for The Banker, a movie starring Samuel L. Jackson and Anthony Mackie. Why? Well, because the son of Mackey's character, Bernard Garrett Sr., was accused of molesting two family girls decades earlier. Apple stopped trying to get the movie nominated for an Oscar and moved the movie's release outside of awards season. Last but not least, will this have an impact on other real-life biopics? As the circumstances surrounding Dallas Sting seem to be quite unique, most people don't feel that it'll have a chilling impact on the practice of narrating true life stories. If you speak to enough people about a subject's life, you can typically notice smoke before there is fire, according to one producer who's adapted journalism and works for TV dramatization. There were fewer publicly accessible documents to use as a benchmark for determining whether or not to proceed with the biopic, since the movie's subject, Kinder's, not a well-known figure. Still, it was better to cancel it instead of taking the risk of hurting any victims. The lesson to be learned is that all it takes is accusations. That's alone enough to make it real. One producer said the whole project's based on what someone's got to say about it. Of course, the story can be investigated, but it's better not to assume that and play it safe. Finally, what's McConaughey up to then? People often talk about the Oscar winner running for office, and he was recently a top choice in polls for the Texas governor's race. He never said he wanted to run for office, but Texan political insiders say he did talk to them. In an interview earlier this year, McConaughey said that he thought the two-party system in the United States was broken. He criticized the rivalry between the Democrat and Republican parties, saying that their whole identities almost sometimes seem to be based on invalidating the other, instead of validating their own vision. Now I know, and I think we all know 
that's not the way to go in the long run, he said. McConaughey was in the news worldwide after a gunman killed 21 people, including 19 children, in a school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. That's also his hometown. Now, for some other related news you might have missed out on. Starting off with McConaughey for president, there's nothing wilder than hearing that Matthew McConaughey's thinking about running for president. Apparently, the Oscar-winning actor was speaking at a technology conference in the San Francisco Bay Area. He told Salesforce CEO Mark Benioff that he would think about running for president in the future because it would be rude not to. He thinks it's just the kind of thing he'd get pulled into because it seems so exciting to him, and we kind of get it. Come on, who wouldn't want to be president? McConaughey added that he thinks he could do a great job at compartmentalizing and managing everything, especially because as an actor, he's experienced in the art of spinning a narrative. And what do politicians do, if not that? Let's talk about how McConaughey honored the Uvalde football team. McConaughey took a moment to remember how his hometown high school football team's first home win of the season brought his town and the rest of the country together. Uvalde High School beat Win of Eagle Pass 34-28 at the Honey Bowl Stadium in Uvalde. The stadium was packed with people. As fans came to support the Coyotes, they did so, knowing that many family and friends were still hurting from the Robb Elementary tragedy. Before the game started, there was a moment of silence for the 19 students and two teachers who had died in the Robb shooting. McConaughey's from Uvalde, and he went back there just days after the Robb Elementary School shooting. Since the tragedy, he's also one of many people who have called for stricter gun laws. McConaughey talked about how Justin Rendon, a senior linebacker at Uvalde High School, wore the number 21 jersey in honor of the Robb victims. He also gave a shout out to the 1972 state champions who were there to celebrate the 50th anniversary of their win. Lastly, Tom Hanks wrote his first book about being in Hollywood. Tom Hanks, who has been a star for a long time, is about to write his first book. We've heard that the making of another major motion picture masterpiece, which is the name of the novel by the two-time Oscar winner, will come out on May 9th, 2023. It's apparently about how a huge, star-studded, multi-million dollar superhero action film and a small comic book that inspired it were made. Hanks told People that the movie's plot is based on his own experiences in Hollywood. Obviously, it covers many years and shows how much American culture has changed since World War II. In one part, which takes place in 1947, a soldier comes home from war and greatly impacts his five-year-old talented nephew. In 1970, that boy grew up to draw comic books, and one of his characters is his uncle. We can only look forward to seeing Hank's penmanship. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think of Dallas Sting being canned? Do you think they should have investigated more? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.